I'm good whenever. I'm ready. The chain was just sent. Let me know when everyone gets the yeah. off. Is anyone else hearing the echo? Yeah, the echo is yeah, the definitely, echo coming is definitely coming from Eric, I think. Is it? But uh, as long as we, as long don't, as we talk don't talk while his, while speeches, are his speeches are happening and he's muted, and he's the, rest muted of the, the rest of the debate, it should be fine. It should be fine. Let me mute myself and I'll see if it's different. Okay. Hello. Yeah. No. Yeah, definitely. I'm not hearing it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rip, I don't know why that just started happening. You Maybe might have Zoom open twice. That's, twice. That's, That's happened to me earlier. I have this open and just like the word stuff. I don't know. I'm I have like an external mic attached. Maybe I'll unplug that real quick. <coughs> Is it better now? Uh, yeah, oh, now I can't actually. hear any of you. Mm. Is anyone saying anything? I want to make sure it's working. No, no one was, but now yeah. I'm talking. Mm -hmm. There we go. Should work now. I'm good when y'all are. Me too. Okay, did everyone get the email? I'm good, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Great. Ever since the Manhattan Project, the bomb has been tied to militarized neo-colonial structures built upon Cold War notions of national security. The bomb has become the symbol par excellence of hegemony, masculine rationality, and native dispossession. Ryan 16 within the Manhattan Project, big science epitome. When nuclear weapons has always been an strategic science that exists to legitimize the hegemonic neo-colonial structures of the Manhattan Project, put science at the heart of national security. Strategic science arose in America's power networks to develop new weapons which have been America's dominance. Big science continues solidifying ideology. Sea science and modernity is symbiotic. Strategic science evolved, sharing profit, making motives and powerful nation states. This continues to be an overtly masculine next size technologies from science or gender to cultural masculinity, technological roles are occupied by men who influence new technologies, description and gender of the technology of real gender, as social and constructive weapons, these are technologies neutral, the best examples such would be nuclear weapons, to basket connotation associated with incalculable power, nuclear weapons, have globally positioned as emblematic of scientific progress, the basket of rationality, nuclear weapons, this course is mired in active versus passive and national security, the basket of science are attributed more by these that frequently champion those are masculinity war disregarding against this group, this is especially true through paradigms of national security and nuclear technology, nuclear arsenals promote authoritarianism, securitization, and containment, modern nuclear policy is always already gendered and racialized, constructing a permanent state of emergency, Justified by a permanent threat, a hypermasculine and simple pervading political discourse. The bomb creates endless authorization and nuclear nationalism. Roy 18, nuclear historiography, the process through which nuclear weapons are stored. That's right to our troubling legacies of nuclear technology. Government elite use of nuclear rhetoric to accomplish politically regressive outcomes. These tendencies emphasize the colonizing teleology of nuclear weapon technology features that circulates like information about nuclear technology, underlying problematic epistemic military industrial complex for nuclearization. Literacy is always already turned into racialized self esteem sponsor post skill of nuclear weapons. It is a topic of alters while provoking this course of nuclear nationalism. Targeted discussions about how nuclear discourse affect our lived realities constructed as a hypermasculine simple power leak. With national state nuclear power has been discursive threats. We're dealt with through new linguistic paradigm from our power words became the fundamental weapons that constructed national security issues with permanent apocalyptic threats pushing into its states of insecurity. This led to a cultural containment to create a source of the duality. This was introduced in every sphere of existence, sexuality, race, or ethnicity. The bomb exists not only within the economy of arms races, but also a realm embedded in respect and status. As such, analysis of the bomb, the bomb divides a wider focus beyond conventional IR studies in the bomb's multiple meanings. South Asian nuclear arsenals inhabit a symbolic economy dominated by securitization, hypermasculinity, and fetishization. Christian 9400. 
<laughs> million people live in poverty and nuclear bombs are going to prove this. India's nuclear bomb is the betrayal by the really classic failed people. Indians see the bombs are dressing in destruction between India's actual status and its deserved status. The bomb is not only within the economy of alliances, but also inhabits another realm of better respect, status, and appreciation. And also, the bomb demands a wider focus beyond conventional international relations. So, look to the multiple meanings of the bomb and assess commodities we have been and have by the functionality of ignore the role of the symbolic commodity when seen as a social signifier whose possession stratifies individuals and circulates through space status is determined through a symbolic economy and use value exchange value. And besides emphasizing social exchange, it's critical in determination of value at parties, works in the discussion of luxury goods, you distinguished by distance to utility, excess social significance, access to the nuclear weapons to be regarded as exemplars of luxury goods in international economy. These goods, whose purpose is rhetorical, never nuclear weapons, inescapables, these links between the mob and self is fetishization. Indian supporters seem to believe its acquisition will magically bring affluence and possession of something owned by the West to see this advanced mob could use it as an antidote to history in which India was the victim of the its man the bomb is a special little of the last British nations for a rebirth of national pride. I affirm India and Pakistan to eliminate their nuclear arsenals. The Af undermine South Asian radioactive colonization through subaltern tactical subversions of nuclear narratives. Our subaltern rewriting of South Asian colonial constructions recuperates native subjectivity and exposes the link between the bomb and securitization. More in 16, there's no space from which the sex of alter can speak about three weeks. This is a subaltern rewriting of hegemonic construction. There's no space from which the British can speak. Their voice is already concerned with deceased materialities of black of bodies to recover. The bomb is an object of mass annihilation. It's just to the socio cultural object which grants freedom to Western finance capital to the umbrella of nuclear weapons because free nuclear threats is omnipresent like shaping political and social identities. The only way to counter such a redeveloping and awareness of the link between the nuclear bomb and neocolonialism challenging nuclearization must disrupt the relations between gender weapons and acquire how such cheap minority subjectivities are framework is revitalization of the anti-nuclear imaginary which is necessary to dismantle paralyzed and securitized representational logics. This is the linchpin of effective discussion with regards to South Asian nuclear policy. Roy Knight, South Asian nuclearization requires a socio-cultural framework of explanations, propositional discourse, and address forward of action spectrums of us in India for closely opportunity to take present action, the apocalyptic imaginary requires a mission apocalyptic scenarios to produce action inhibiting representational logics and alternative movement issue to rhetoric some doomsday to curative security. This can be diversified anti nuclear protests linking nuclear weapons and nuclear energy. Such calls are really not hypothetical. The killing state should take center stage. The object of opposition is not the bomb and its owner of the state. The anti politics should be supplemented by positive political imaginaries movement built not on fear that this world will end, but on hope that other worlds are possible. Purely militaristic and conventional studies of nuclear weapons cannot grasp South Asia's intimate connections between the nuclear and the state or approach to IR as the starting point for effective analysis with regards to South Asian nuclear arsenals. Abraham and Nike studies of nuclear power, chopper two structural wheels have cannot by meeting beyond national security failing to see security as a discourse of social power. Most cities of India and Pakistan, nuclear complex cannot grasp what nuclear power in South Asia means there the frame of military concerns and obscures the intimate connection between nuclear state and society. These connections are lost to understanding the limit of the object of instrumental analysis. The euphoria marks the point of departure to get the heart of nuclear power in South Asia. We have to move beyond models of deterrence and trace connection to domination. Super knowledge of South Asian nuclear is to produce social relations. The poles of social consent and political resistance do not summarize nuclear power. Their starting point more important is to recognize the conjoining of nuclear power, national security, and state power. Anthropocentric nuclear policy requires integrative analysis blurring the lines between conflicting ideologies mastery over nature has entered a new phase of nuclear majority we must account for the underlying power structures that create nuclear fallout bring robber and Gorg 17 people must accept the future they cannot know natural social sciences must cooperate and credit integrative analysis single disciplines cannot comprehend all the consequences of intro socio technical systems this problem blur the boundaries expertise must listen to fact people local actors have acquired much knowledge about the nuclear waste knowledge must be included if a transitory approach is to be mastery over nature is such a new phase nuclear technologies majority must take into account characteristics of human actions in our analysis as well as the social political and underlying power structures will achieve to nuclear power. Like this debate will aggravate even to back here tomorrow. Perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, does the app implement the resolution as independent consequences? Yes. Okay, so who is the actor of the app? India and Pakistan's governments. Is they eliminate just... their nuclear arsenals. So I'm, I guess my question is, is it some kind of treaty that they both sign? Is it like individual governments just promise to do it? Like, I'm, how does that work? We fiat an elimination of nuclear arsenals. Yeah, India and Pakistan, through the same way that you fiat an elimination of U.S. nuclear arsenals. Through I understand what fiat is. I'm just asking whether it's a treaty that they both sign, whether the, each government themselves unilaterally does it, whether there's something that does it together. I'm just asking how the implementation mechanism works. We don't take a stance on sort of multilateral treaties that would be used to enforce the plan, but we've made arguments that implementing the affirmative would be done in the world of the plan and would be good. Um, sure. Then let's go to the harms at the top. Can you explain? Uh, so the first card just seemed to talk about why America having nukes is bad. What does that lead to the conclusion that every single country in the world having them is also bad? That's a bit of a reductive analysis of our first piece of raw evidence. First, what no, it does talking, is it takes a yeah. historical Yeah, it takes a historical analysis of how yeah, nuclear like weapons Manhattan are part of something project. called Where big does it science. the conclusion India and Pakistan should eliminate nukes? What well, evidence do you have in the agency exactly. that specifically says their nuclear weapons are bad? If you let me continue, this card says that nuclear weapons were created as something called big science. 
turning, sort of becoming the symbol of nationalism, security, and strategy in nations. Then when the West colonized India and Pakistan and left its sort of military bases there, that American masculinizing project soon became transferred to India and Pakistan and created a okay, perverse thank you. attachment to the spectacle. Thank you. Of I guess that may have been true when America first created the bomb. Do you have any evidence that today they are using these weapons in a bad way? Our argument is even if nuclear weapons are not literally being dropped on natives today, the symbol of nuclear weapons as being created by their material accumulation creates day-to-day -day insecurities. For so example, the app only has like symbols of nuclear weapons that are not physically bad? Well, no. Let me continue. We've made arguments that this sort of symbol does have material consequences. Think of how the Pokhran testing range in India led to radiation poisoning, cancer, and disenfranchisement of native groups in India. So we make arguments that that sort of nationalizing testing? project is bad. So What's your question? So the terminal impact of the app is just testing. These symbols lead no, to testing. No, definitely not. We've made Which arguments that impacts. nuclear weapons are the symbol of securitization and otherizing. Okay, I guess I'm unclear about what impacts that's under the AF framework. Can you explain? Our argument is just that nuclear weapons create securitization, otherization, and conflict. That right, happens. as in I'm confused about whether the AF cares about the symbols, the consequences, the material violence. Can you explain what? It does care about the, the consequences. <laughs> We've made arguments about how that should be structured differently in an international sphere dominated by India and Pakistan. I'm closing my press. Thank you. Okay, 403 left. It'll be one and then case, just top down. Sorry, what was the order? One off, case, top down. Does everyone have the dog? I just got it. I'm good when everybody else is. Okay, is anyone not ready? The AFS plan focuses an example of arms control and the disarmament since it focuses on incremental particular form of nuclear forms of nuclear violence. The app cleanses the very hegemonic structures that cause the app to make structural violence and extinction natural bis blast. When we see the regime is anti politics, we see arms control measures that to launch the interests of Judas and Power States of Christian Global Instruction Regime, Crazy Corporation Station, Tracking Monitoring, have the Hand of Tokyo and Gates, who are hard to cover with IAE, which is on the external strategy, trying to develop a response for the military to stop disarmament. The expansion of the power happens in the name of non corruption and cause a sense of urgency that allows the institutions to decide the Roman private that also bosses states in the military's position on equal political challenges, system squashed by hands and administration, and pressure and political challenges that global depression, security, and efficient resources on arms control, disarmament can be back to the 
Muslim Joe, and the deposition non prohibition can also in Lunch is less interested by the pollution weapons and viewing India and Pakistan as the cause of nuclear colonialism, further authorization of fossil fuels. Reference to the stability of the third world is implicit. There is sp- the th- specific link is threefold. One, in the absence of injury to specific Indo Pak planet when they have 300 nukes while papering over border colonial harms through US and Russia's 10,000 nukes to the first war record that explains US Manhattan Project creating nuclear colonialism and then concluding what they should keep nukes while victim blaming brown countries. Three, the Christian evidence. This is Indian people want the bomb so they can become advanced and Western gusts in 1999. And the act, anti-war feminist approach is an abstraction that fails to acknowledge the reality that sometimes you support and nukes is necessary to save people from harm. Their approach is incorrect, self-sufficient, and harmful. Peace, and friends, and the people on both the war anti-war feminist thinking does the options for the act. I think I see trends of violent methods. Experience is very important. Repeated results of answers just like the future was an unconfused or becoming more question to king. And the people of the outside on COVID is necessary to avoid annihilation. Some was more necessary to protect from harm. The fact that feminists are recognizing reality one is often trashy. It might be just not the same as implicitly accepting Paris as well to ignore the reality. Or to provide the obstruction of the rough and practical measures for limiting suffering the situation to citizens of war making. Say one has a bad choice to decide whether or not to go to war. The anti war feminist approach offers fails to offer concrete suggestions for writing on COVID when it goes to the rest of the armed to the Don't need to continue as less people on all things which is nothing COVID fighting the ritual. And even if nuclear weapons cause war to be embedded in everyday life through the symbols that the AF claims, Actual wars was peace three. I don't think this is why we say the laws mentioned the actual family subsidies that were much less of my everyday life. This is we join with the alternative reports of which is in Moscow, Moscow, the Indian Connections of Wars of Pakistan, everyday life, normally discreet, that is not those because of wars, Hong Kong, Greece, you're just having them the absence of all purpose of family thinking, but the ethics of WNGs attend to have such differences in contours and prevention from all from everyday life. And and very negative to reject the F status logic, this is this is twice two. This is the language of nuclear statism. Because I thought you remember the reputation of one nation to engage in nuclear politics and the literature that used to use utopian nuclear fuel and these logical statistics because of institutionalized global inequality, social and logical security, making the case for subaltern versus system, even more grand authority of the institutions cannot be subaltern. So, taking the versus subaltern to my inclusion, which are looking to subaltern may extend the direction of global. So, you just thought we would get to be something we could find a domestic and subaltern. We cannot hope to fix the track for you. The permutation is due both since anything else is severance and trinity and makes the alpha movie tug, which kills cash, but you can't do both since one. The key concludes that nukes should not be limited to incorporation tactics. I just empty utopian process. Hence, there's no case. Only way to kind of he- he- hegemony colonialism and all the impacts of the absolute of the church also your own Abraham 9 evidence is it is turned on South Asian nuclear produced around such relations and your Rogue 17 evidence is single. This one's kind of harm all the consequences of intellectual social technical systems. So there isn't one terrorizing data that you can claim as your root cause of all violence, which specifically takes out the kind of Manhattan Project and the project of analysis. Next, all the AC evidence just says discussions around the bomb are bad, not the bomb itself, just where the symbols are bad, which means that the symbols can always be changed throughout time. They have no impact unless they can actually create material problems. So just both can get away with the symbols bad if we win that the consequences of the app are bad, especially since it can see the next death is bad and comes to us the consequence of a biological death pattern three. Even patients that are definitely as important as the patient person goes there and must follow these life forces that they follow the process of harm reduction process to spread the life they make in the Bible. Parts of family life also reduces the reduction of the smoke further and the meaning of life. And most of you already on material plans act 16. Those consequences change theories hope. Those words will have those who treat them just to voluntary and just first as the righteous source of the promise of changing beliefs that everyone in public is such a magic with this future where we just don't have the power to meet the multitudes who don't believe in listen to the evil multitudes in spite of action. The false is unlike your results in the with the support of powerful interests. And there is often lack of translation to reality. Trickle them go through either use of self blocking, but empirical lacking here is called in rank to discuss about justice and reality and strike in the decision. Real life because they're not insufficient bridges to transit everything that's happening within the policy, not when opposition is opposing these positions of equal access or similar like seven so relic reality and reliable so it is within itself, not the line balance first. There were 16 evidence. Oh, the app literally just leaves American dominance intact and doesn't solve the root cause of the app. So if you care about all these ideologies and root cause claims, then they definitely don't solve. Second, sure, maybe all these ideologies existed during World War, but not today. There's no clear evidence in the AC that symbols cannot change throughout time. So prefer all of our particularity and assets. We go to the Christian nine evidence. We impact on the specialization. It is a good idea for you to get the stages and recognition if that is what the people themselves decide. And the app has I mean, the app doesn't actually have any analysis of what the, what the people themselves want next. This just says that p- people are pouring India has a bond. There's no kind of, there's no kind of internal link about the, how the app is going to solve any of these, any of these problems. Like how they haven't proven why the money from the nuclear weapon programs is going to go to these kinds of social problems, which was just nothing bad with India specifically having a bond. That's the group that Abraham and the BNG 17. And this has no definition as to what a conventional study is, making proof of specific author and to our evidence. Our authors are also representing marvelous communities. It means you can't just weigh this as like a, our evidence is 
Our evidence is holistically more important. Next, nuclear deterrence is single handed liberation, any conventional elimination with spotted as a high age 20. This will prove that Nipakas and Nipakas and Nipakas and Nipakas and also her native Italian and Kunjas and Kunjas and Kunjas and Nipakas with the citizens that are beginning to conventional concepts of women's displaced and become hostile to Germany and Sweden and Shakti and Kargo 2001. But we are aggressively explained by other factors and tensions will die down anyway. I'm here in 19. How they should follow. I remember this point. I've become a general election. The Nipakas and 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 Nipak
I don't know if they're showing signs of being alive, like, you know. It's based on biological factors out. alone, I assume. Yeah. If you want to talk oh. about like social death or something, I think I already made arguments why material violence has to come first or like rejecting or pre preventing death is more important than the ideological symbolic stuff that the AF talked about. All right. And uh, even if you do care about that, I think the K is very good at responding to that. All right. Thank you. Uh, I guess that's it. I'll start prep. I have two minutes, three seconds left. There'll be one card. It's case and K, and I'll set it right now. just sent it. Let me know whenever it has it. Just in the body of the email, you two can more recent time. Okay, I just got it. I'm going to paste it into the doc. Okay, great. Everyone ready? 
I'm good. The symbolic and material scheme of South Asian nuclear weapons justifies an endless state of exception, masking colonialism, hypermasculine violence under the pursuit of national security. This is strategically exported through an us versus them complex in which certain bodies are deemed as harmful byproducts. Used to pure utility, turn them into docile machines of state politics. We eliminate India and Pakistan's nuclear arsenals through tactical subversion, which is a methodological revitalization of how we view nuclear weapons through a material elimination. The first argument they make on case, they talk about not having a totalizing theory. We agree. Our, that's our justification for the permutation, that we must blur the lines between conflicting theories and instead find how those theories interlock to create the best middle ground between them. We aren't totalizing. Our theory is very specific to the instance of how India and Pakistan's nuclear arsenals function materially and symbolically right Right now, the next argument about discussion of the bomb is not true. We've made arguments about how material violence is short of safe shaping the material and symbolic scheme of how nuclear weapons are formed. That was Roy. They say that we have to have death and consequences first. Framing issue. You should evaluate impact through a question of subaltern practices. This means prioritizing slow violence into subaltern communities prior to their extinction scenarios. First is luxury politics. What do you see, Chris? Just as their investment within spectacle of extinction-based politics is predicated on sanitizing the mundane and quotidian structures of death that create subaltern bodies in India and Pakistan, that addiction to spectacle produces a genocidal desire to kill and kill over and over again. Second, a serial policy failure. Apocalyptic securitization leads to a repetition compulsion where we begin to desire more and more images to satiate our national state image, which makes Indo-Pak conflict inevitable through cultural scapegoating, etc. The less to their line-by-line -line arguments talking about how the affirmative doesn't solve. We do. Our Roy evidence indicates that the bomb creates a unique environment within India and Pakistan, which creates an otherization complex. Think of how the cargo war, Kashmir conflict, and Pokhran testing range were all started because the nuclear weapons were able to justify people's being lesser because they didn't have the sort of national pride that the nuclear bomb sort of symbolized per our Roy evidence. They say the symbols in the past are bad. No, we've made arguments on how nuclear weapons today recreate systems of otherization, slow violence, and badness. That was sort of answers above the fetishization. Good stuff is impact turned by our Christian evidence because it says that, that sort of sanitization recreates serial policy failure. That was above the Zach evidence. That's true. But the affirmative is the best symbol and material understanding of how nuclear Nuclear weapons function. We've made arguments about how symbolic sort of informs material understanding, which is how scapegoating leads to war. Their deterrent stuff, framing issue, the app impact turns and turns and turns is the sanitization of violence that was above. Second is diplomacy can solve it. The US and Russia have de escalated chemical and biological weapons in the past. Third is the affirmative solves. The recent India and Pakistan go to conventional war is because of the desire of securitization, which is what the affirmative addresses. The aggression through other stuff argument doesn't make much sense because we've made arguments about how India and Pakistan operate through a symbolic realm as well. They see the plan least to worst military. That is false. That was answered in the deterrent stuff above. And also, we get durable fiat, which proved that it would shift to other sort of arguments. The rearmament stuff is bad. Durable fiat solves it. First is clash of losses to understand the substantive level of our debate and also creates better topic education through that. The critique. At the top, permutation do both. We should understand the militaristic studies of India and Pakistan's nuclear arsenals and sort of break down status politics. The affirmative is the best middle ground. That was our Bruno Brown reference that they read for us. The line by line, they say arms control, incrementalist, and violence linked to. And our argument is that this is that, that we should empower India and Pakistan to disarm their own nuclear weapons themselves and break themselves free of the sort of sadist divides that they've been sort of capped by. That also impact turns most of their arguments on the next Gusterson piece of evidence because it's not about third world complicity, but rather trying to go against that fetishization of being a part of the West because the bomb sort of symbolizes advanced international relations theory. The anti-war feminist argument is terrible. Nowhere in the affirmative does it say that we're an anti-war feminist approach, but rather a sort of diplomatic middle ground to understand how the nuclear weapons are rather sutured to how we create international relations in the real world. The real war outweighs stuff. No, securitization creates a condition for logic of war. That was our overview, talking about how it creates a condition for endless violence. The reject status logic is terrible, and it can't solve any of our arguments because it can't materially theorize how how we should engage in status institutions to rectify subaltern violence. He may rain crap for you.
Okay, it's going to be the case and then the K. Sounds good. Is anyone all good? Okay. The one that was very shifty on what impacts actually under matter, under their frame. Firstly, talk about all these desires and how it's a prerequisite to mature solutions. So let me clean this up. First, extend a few of the arguments that they said that one, material violence has to come first. That was a past sensory evidence. And said so the death is bad and has to come first. Then this is a better prerequisite argument than the affront. It literally says it, it says if people died, and it's a prerequisite to us being able to have the kind of philosophical discussions of the affirmative to begin with. That's part of the Zach 16 evidence. This says that we should only care about we should only care about material violence. So our response to our response to that kind of framing mechanism here first they talk about like evaluating subaltern pragmatism but i'm not going for extinction which means i don't even link it to any of these arguments and the only thing you should care about is whether the app's policy option whether the indian pakistan limiting nukes is going to lead to good or bad things for the people living in those countries and so far as i'm going to prove why the app policy is going to lead to massive debt that outweighs all of their claims on magnitude next uh, which is definitely our uh, next outweighs next uh, the, which also means we turn your spectacle argument they're very happy to talk about how they're deconstructing indian pakistan's desires but they don't care when they're affirmed it literally justifies all these people dying, which is not extinction about the rest of the world, but just these people in these countries, which is the ivory tower theorizing of the Zach evidence indicts and turns all of the arguments to zero policy. Theory. It makes no sense. The app is the one defending the policy. I'm the negative defending the scroll, which is working right now, which is why you should just air heavily negative if this debate is confusing. Lastly, on this, on all of the like symbolic options, he considered all of the all of the recutting of the evidence. First was the Abraham 9 evidence. It literally says to the South Asian nukes is produced around social relations, and Glock 17 says single disciplines cannot comprehend all the consequences of intellect social technical systems which is isn't one totalizing theory that they can claim is the entire root cause of violence that should sufficiently take out all of their kind of symbolic violence but even if they're correct that this that their kind of symbolic discussion of violence is key to solve material material violence you should even, even if that theory is entirely correct today you still have to buy that their conclusion from that theory i.e eliminating nukes is going to be better than the alternative which is even if i kind of uh, even if I undercover some kind of blip that, you can still bring up the material, material bombs. Now, next framing issue on the one year sovereignty. They've read a lot of pretty buzzwords about nuclear desire. Not a single word on the one year told you anything about why India and Pakistan governments are doing bad things with nukes. They just talk about how it's a form of nationalism or is, is it all like the existence of them is necessarily bad. But there were no warrants for this in the one year. It's just an extension of the word. So I'll line by line all of these arguments first. The argument about masking colonialism and the export from the US, we already turned this, we, we already responded to this first. Just because this was true in this was true during World War II doesn't mean it is true now. The app has not proven some kind of continuation of that logic into the into, into, into present day, which means our evidence is massively going to post all of this evidence. What does tactical subversion even mean? They're just eliminating nukes. They haven't won any kind of ideological something that is going to happen, which again we'll get we'll get onto the case and so total the totalization argument. You and you definitely you're still making claims why your symbolic theory necessarily has to come first, which proves that you is way more totalizing than our specific argument and you're not material the way we are. The, the, the bomb creates unique environment authorization. I'll let me give you a history lesson. The Kashmir conflict happened way before nuclear weapons were ever given to either of the states, which proves that Indian Pakistan was still engaging in nationalism before the nukes even happened, which, which, which proves that the, app, uh, the opposite, historical analysis of nuclear weapons is completely inaccurate and doesn't actually solve any of the any of the forms of violence. The, sanitize, the sanitization, um, the, the, the impact of the times. I'll extend the case on proper hit by some for the conventional war argument is Dvorsky 9. It says the app guarantees conventional war. Deterrent works. Eliminating nukes increase the likelihood of devastating conventional war by undermining deterrence and sparking instability, which causes massive death. Also proves nuclear resources will switch over to other militaristic endeavors. There are multiple warrants. One is the end negative. We don't have nuclear war right now. The unpredictability from eliminating nukes would cause lose it or lose it pressures, which would make people which would make people proliferate and, and cause massive death in the country. Two, India had three wars before nukes and only small skirmishes since, which proves that even if they do have these forms of nationalism, they haven't they haven't projected it in a way that causes massive harm for three. Conventional war would be less than nuclear Google, keep on watching some air on the battlefield. Our analysis does it. Whereas your analysis doesn't. Next, the durable fear of this There was almost no born. All these steps clash under sense substance education. There's no explanation here, all for topic education. So just don't buy durable fear. They also didn't explain what that means. Does that does it just mean that it won't shift? Does that mean that they just get to fear all all every all the It's just default negative. We extend the class 17 evidence, which defined elimination in terms of topic education and clash arguments. And the evidence literally said elimination is the irreversible destruction, which means that if a country were to rearm, it would start from scratch. That is negative ground because all the app can fear is that all of the nukes get eliminated completely. The, the weapon material will be completely turned to dust, but in the app cannot feel that they don't recreate them in the future. And that would just make the app extremely extra topical. That means that they can just make infinite number of planks, and the negative will never be able.
people to engage in imbalance and predictable property, which tons will be clash, tons will be clash arguments. And these definitely will agree on this with the tons of the absent mode materialism arguments because it proves the nuclear resources will switch over to other militaristic endeavors. Insofar as the app doesn't have any symbolic solvency, there is no evidence that they won't switch over to these endeavors. In fact, I'll, I'll switch the Kashmir example for them once. And so while once Indian Pakistan realized the conventional weapons were, were conventional weapons weren't, weren't good enough for them, that's when they got the bomb, which which which, which proves that it was proves that if you eliminate for previous types of weapons, they'll just switch over to others. And the and the ideology still remains there. Now you can extend the Hagati 20 evidence, which proves that deterrence works, and it postdates all the evidence. You can't win an impact test because after winning link which none, 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 which none of the one AR did, it shows there is a broad consensus that any Pakistan weapons have deterred the major war in this sense that sense of both countries no conventional conflict risking weapons. They are rational and have been disincentivized from projecting all of these arguments. This also cites the three wars that I actually gave in my in my analytics earlier, which I a massive conventional war, kill tons of people, material violence definitely matches more than anything. Even if I miss some kind of blippy argument, I'm definitely just like winning that material violence comes first. Conventional war will happen. The app definitely doesn't solve anything. They haven't even given any examples of how like India and Pakistan are using nukes badly. So you should default ahead of the next and there's the critique. Kick the critique, I'm not going for a pants on offense with them. They're just a test of they're just a test of constitution. The late tends to prove anything you can cross by the more there's 16 evidence that people in India want nuclear weapons, which was, which should be terminal defense on any of the apps extension arguments or any of the any of the late tens. This was a specific study. They didn't provide any provide any indice to it. And if you if you think that the app is like deconstructing these logics, they're not actually speaking for the subaltern because they want news. <laughs> I believe I have 203 left. Okay, I'll take that. <clears throat> uh, it's just gonna be case. I'll answer the one like uh, one argument on the K that was made in the two and R quickly at the like the beginning of the case analysis. But I'll just do it top down. Hold on. Is everyone ready?
The next question of this debate is which side can provide a better theorization of how international relations functions in the Typical material consequences of India and Pakistan's nuclear relations. We provided a historical example for all of our Roy evidence, the Sachin conflict, the Kargil War, the 2001s to 2002s India and Pakistan standoff, 2008's Pakistani standoff, and 2013's India and Pakistan conflict all prove that there is a sort of otherization conflict that occurs tied to nuclear weapons. How India and Pakistan have more conflict because they can deem each other as the creators of nationalistic violence tied to the bomb. We want arguments on nuclear weapons are unique in the violence that they create sort of creating a spectacle over determining how international relations function. Think of how the nuclear bass at Nagasaki created fear in Japanese immigrants for generations. We want arguments about how nuclear weapons create a sort of symbolic economy that over determines how we understand material relations. That has a couple impacts. First, the proves that the affirmative and symbolic impacts outweigh materially. It proves that it creates a sort of serial policy failure. If we don't focus on how nuclear weapons are tied to the social relations of India and Pakistan, then that leads to sort of bad treaty making peace deals and serial policy flavor proven by our Christian evidence, which was not answered. It also proves that we want on a symbolic level, which obviously come first. The one argument about not wanting the symbolic conflicts first, this never answered the question of why people are trying to say yes. The answer is because state imposes its desire to try to compel individuals to try to join this nationalistic sentiment. Second, this is incorrect. Roy and Krista disprove it. There's a substantial past between an oppression and now, and also it's a super bloody argument that you went on, so you shouldn't bring your hat on it. It's pretty skeptical of it. All where Roy evidence impact turns and proves that it's wrong. The rest of the line by line arguments on case, the first argument about how material violence has to come first, this assumes that people aren't dead right now, which is our luxury politics decide for the Krista evidence. It says that there's a sort of endemic conflict of slow violence that's created through nuclear weapons where they constantly overdetermine how we understand nuclear policy. And as such, we have to frame how we understand material violence in that way. The next argument about policy of leading to massive death outweighs is incorrect. Our Roy evidence is an impact turn of the sort of math death spectrum that they forwarded. It's called the apocalyptic imaginary, where we're able to perversely love the sort of spectacle of mass death, which allows us to justify how we understand ourselves as life. Think about the Kashmir conflict and this massive death created the sort of understanding of how one could be Pakistani or Indian. The next totalizing theories argument doesn't work. Our argument is that we aren't totalizing, but rather providing a very specific and nuanced criticism of how Indians, Pakistan's nuclear relations are good. Ask yourself what specific evidence have they provided that has provided a macro political study of India and Pakistan. The answer is None. The other argument they make about how nuclear might not being materially bad was answered above the tactical subversion stuff is correct. We say that we have to use an unearthing of our assumptions, which is a sort of material elimination. The nationalism before argument is disproven by our historical analysis. Deterrence fails. They've conceded a couple arguments which prove that pretty determined. The affirmative solves that because it goes against this sort of securitizing desire, which is we won is the root cause. The rearmament argument, even if it's true, you haven't won a reason why countries should try to rearm, which is proven by all of our Roy arguments. Nice to meet
Okay, we are in. I'll obviously hold on until everyone is here. Or it just says hi or something. I'm here. I'm here too. Okay, perfect. Nika, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Cool. So congratulations to both debaters for reaching the doubles of the TOC. The decision is a 2-1 for the negative from Lexington. Um, okay, so I said I can go first. Um, give me a second to pull Tavern back up. Ultimately, I thought this was a uh, good debate, and I think that the negative is probably more technically proficient in this debate, but the largest problem I have is the lack of um, substantial offense that I can vote on. There are two offensive arguments I can isolate on my flow after the K is kicked and the 2 and R, um, and that is the sort of uh, deterrence argument and the, I don't know what I meant to type there. Um, yeah, the deterrence argument and the rearmament argument, that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, the impact both seems to be mass death, war, etc. There are a couple of problems with this for the negative. One, I think that the AF wins that indo pac violence is a result of securitizing and, uh, nationalist logics and the status quo, which is symbolically represented through nuclear weapons. And two, that the spectacle of mass death is deployed to justify uh, said logics when one questions them as the AF does. Well, I don't necessarily think that these arguments are the gold standard um, of, you know, of, of uh, just Justifications for this AF. Uh, the two and R is particularly too light on these parts of the debate for me. Uh, from there, it becomes a question of uh, risk of offense that the AF can solve just a small portion uh, or even a little bit of this sort of symbolic economy versus the status quo. But since the two and R concedes the repetition compulsion argument, which I both think warrants why one, the symbolism uh, of the bomb could have, but has it changed? And two, a reason the status quo results in a continuation of uh, subaltern violence. I think that a risk of, you know, even 1% risk uh, that the AF solves a portion of the, symb the symbolic economy is sufficient to go to front of Okay, I can go next. Uh, so I, at the end of the 2NR, I kind of think that I'm going to be voting negative on this rearm argument because I do think that the 1AR kind of mishandles it. But I think that the 2AR is correct that the 2NR also kind of mishandles it because the F is right that there's not really like a warrant for why I should assume that these countries will uh, rearm. Uh, and I think that that is a shame because I think that that argument would have been a far easier route to the ballot. Uh, and the fact that that doesn't happen means that the final two rebuttals are a little frustrating for me because I think that both speeches obviously win impacts and offense. Uh, and importantly, you all win impacts kind of on the same layers. But I think that neither of you is really being particularly comparative for me on things like how I should evaluate the conventional war argument that the 2NR is going for versus the serial policy failure argument that the 1AR and 2AR are going for or versus kind of like the small skirmishes that get named in the 2AR as a result of the development of nuclear weapons. There's no kind of discussion on y'all's part as to how the kind of bad peace treaties, which is how the 2AR characterizes serial policy failure, uh, would outweigh or not outweigh the conventional war impact that the 2AR goes for or the 2NR goes for. Uh, and so I think that that is a little frustrating because it means that I just kind of have to decide some things here. Uh, I buy that the world of the affirmative eliminates nukes and that the negative has one that I should interpret durable fiat as meaning that rearm is possible because nukes do not just kind of, uh, or because the word of uh, the definition of the word eliminate that they win. I also, however, agree with the F that the Tunar does not win rearm. And so that means that the world of the affirmative is one where nukes have been eliminated. Countries could rearm but do not, and conventional war occurs as a development of use it or lose it pressures that do not currently exist in the status quo. The world of the negative is one where there, is, there might be serial policy failure when it comes to things like bad treaties and peace deals, but there's not an implication of this serial policy failure argument to slow violence, even though that framing argument is made, I think, fairly compellingly in the uh, 1AR. And so that means that even if the world of the negative is one where countries keep their nukes and there are kind of like bad symbolic impacts, those symbolic impacts are not occurring or spilling over to the material level 
on a scale that is comparable to the impact the negative is weighing. Uh, I think that the affirmative likely uh, has an accurate theory of where the drive for nukes derives from, but I just don't think that the two hour has an impact to that theory. And so I vote negative because I think that conventional conflict would occur in a world without nuclear weapons, and that that conflict would occur at a level that is higher than the smaller skirmishes that occurred during a world with nukes. I also think that the Zach evidence that the two NR extends is good at indicting the AF on a kind of like epistemic layer, uh, because the two NR implicates it as a reason that I should interpret the affirmative as kind of ivory tower theorizing that is searching for, oh, we have found the right discourse that will resolve the kind of structural or ideological issues that exist in the status quo, but that does not change uh, the kind of existing tensions between India and Pakistan that would lead to them still having conventional war, which would be deadlier than the wars that are, or the, the skirmishes that the affirmative claims are happening right now. I think that this is like certainly a winnable debate for the affirmative. And I actually think that there's like a potentially interesting uh, argument uh, where you kind of, I don't know if link turn is the word I want to use here, but kind of link turn the deterrent stuff and just go for, look, the AF deconstructs the bad versions of nukes that exist in the status quo and in the process kind of ruptures that symbolic economy. If countries do rearm, they would rearm with like that better ideology in place, which would still allow for deterrence to occur, but would resolve the kind of structural critique that the affirmative is forwarded. I think that that would be like a tough needle to thread, but I do think that it would be like an interesting slash doable one that would mean that you kind of co-opt good portions of the offense that the negative is going for on that material layer. Um, yeah, uh, I ended up voting on the, the rearmament argument. Um, I think that, uh, like, the Terrier makes a no-warrant argument, but I think I get enough of a warrant that I feel comfortable here. Um, or I guess specifically I vote that because of rearmament, there, uh, a risk of deterrence being true is sufficient to vote neg. Um, I think given that the Terrier gets to these arguments with, like, both of these arguments with around 10 seconds left, um, I feel pretty comfortable, um, like, listening to the top level of the 2NR here. So... That's how I made my decision. Thank you all for judging. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions, Eric? Uh, yeah, I do. I was wondering if, if it is true that the affirmative is winning the argument about like a symbolic economy necessarily preceding material consequences, then why does that mean that serial policy failure is not inherently a material impact that would impact her sort of deterrence? Uh, well, I mean, I think serial policy failure is a material impact that the affirmative is winning. But the way that I have it explained in the 1AR and 2AR is that serial policy failure that the affirmative is winning would manifest in the form of uh, bad peace treaties. Uh, or bad peace deals and bad treaty negotiations. And that like second level is never explained as to what that would look like that would be the types of slow violence that occur. I think if the 2AR just extends like a slow violence claim and an ex or the slow violence claim that's in the 1AR, because I think the 1AR is doing a good job on the slow violence claim, uh, plus an explanation of why the bad treaties or peace deals or serial policy failure would manifest in slow violence, then it becomes a lot easier for me to resolve this, this debate in favor of the affirmative. But ultimately I think that yeah, maybe the AF is winning a material impact, but it is not winning that that material impact outweighs the negative's material impact. And so that means that even if I think that some of the symbolic economy claims are true, I also think that the negative is winning a framing claim as to why materiality does matter. And so I have to figure out what AF impact would I be voting for? And I just can't answer that question based off of the flow in the two AR that I have. All right. Okay. Good debate. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks. Yep.